Hello, this is Tas from Tiplister. Today we're going to look at a scenario that actually comes up surprisingly often. You may have universal items on your app, which everyone should see and be able to interact with, such as here, everyone can buy bananas, apples, and orange juices, or on Twitter, everyone can uh, read tweets, or on Pinterest, everyone can see pins. But then, from these universal things, users may want to make their own choices. So here, in this example, one user may want to buy just bananas and apples, and another may be allergic to apples for life and have to buy orange juices. On Pinterest, every pin board is unique, or on Twitter, every retweet or thread is unique. So how do we go about doing this on Bubble? So um, this is just uh, items in the back end, but then I've had to create two things more to make this uh, possible just repeating group items here but then in the database i've created something also called an order item this is for example if someone chooses to order two bananas it would be a number two and the item would be the banana the universal item okay and then we also need to open a shopping order shopping order may have a list of order items so for example bananas apples and orange juice and a name. Okay, and then what we do here is we just have an input field and a plus icon. And what does the plus icon do? It creates a new shopping order only if the current user's shopping order is empty. So underneath user, we've given the user a shopping order. This is singular. You can also do this plural, I'll show you later. Plural, as an example, would also be on Pinterest, you can have multiple pin boards. So now we're just doing one pin board or one shopping order. And we're first creating it, but it, because if it's empty, if the current user has no shopping order yet, then nothing can be saved on it yet because nothing can be attached to it because it's empty. So we have to create it. We have to make that shopping order we just created, the current user's shopping order. And then we create a new order item which one the current sales item so we click two bananas two bananas and then we also have to amend the current user's shopping order to add to its list of items the order item which we've just created just for that user okay then how would we display this here i've got a repeating group it's type order item so this one was type items just searching for items but this is just the current user's shopping orders list of items and inside it, we've got the actually a group item. We can also do this. So here on the left, we had a group item, just showing the current sales item. And here we have a repeating group of order items. So we can't just, um, we, we have to therefore do current sales orders item to make this group type item. And we can also show the amount of order items if two bananas have been ordered. Okay. And then when we uh, click at checkout, what we may also want to do is we want to just clear the list, the current user's shopping order. We want to clear the list of items. So we can then make a new order. Okay, and then we may want to calculate the total price of everything. So let's first show it here by making it visible. Just for simplicity's sake, I made it invisible earlier. Currently, there are no orders, so I click banana, and the banana comes up. I click three apples, and three apples come up. Orange juice, two orange juices come up. And also, if I've forgotten something, such as I've forgotten that my grandmother is over to stay, I can add two orange juices. And then I can also calculate the total price. So this is done by multiplying one banana times two dollars, two dollars, plus three dollars, plus six dollars, plus six dollars is seventeen. So I can then use the calculate some product to calculate this. All I did was I went on calculate formula. I selected some product. And as you saw here, I multiplied the number times the price. So the first list is the current user's shopping order's list of items number. So the amount of items I have. And the second is the current user's shopping order's list of items, items price. So the banana costs two, for example, or the apple costs one, etc. These are multiplied together. Okay, 
so that uh, works as we just saw. But what if you want to have multiple shopping orders? So you have one shopping order for your grandmother and one for your daughter. Or also on Pinterest, you may have several pin boards in which, uh, for example, the banana could not only be a text but a picture and you want to save the banana to one pin board but the apple to another one quickly. How would you do this? So all we do here would be to create a drop down. And the drop down is dynamic and it shows shopping orders and it shows the current users' shopping orders. And it shows the name of the shopping order. And a similar way we can copy this here so that we always show not the current user shopping order but drop down B's value in here. And we need to show the list of items. Okay, and then when we click plus, importantly, we get rid of having to create a new shopping order. And the order we change is the drop down is value. So when we click plus, a new order item is created. And that order item is added to the shopping order we've selected in the drop down. But we also now need a place where we can create new shopping orders. I've just created an input here where you can put in grandmother order or daughter order and click create. All it does is it creates a new shopping order and adds that shopping order to the list of shopping orders of the user. Otherwise, again, if this were empty, we could not see it here and save anything to it. Okay, let's see how this works. So I've got none yet, as you can see, so I have to add grandmother order, daughter order, and I see them here, and I see them here. It's empty so far, but I can add one, two, and it's added to it, or in a similar way, daughter is empty now, and I can add something to the daughter's order. This, of course, I would have to amend. I, I did not change that yet, but that's basically the process. So in the database, I've basically created two new things, kind of summarizing this up, the order item, which is whenever it kind of you create something just for the user, and the shopping order, this is where you save it to the user. And then the user, of course, to save it to him in the final step, has a list of shopping orders or just a singular shopping order. And if it's a list, they select a drop down. If it's not, they add it by just clicking the plus button. Okay, hope this helped you. For more short tips, just search for bubble on tipser.com.